Excuse me, I just moved here to Aquatopolis and can't see the aquaponic fountains. Do you know when the next tour starts? Oh, uh, the next tour doesn't start for another hour. Is this a model of Aquatopolis? This is a model of a section of the city with a scale of one inch equals 25 feet. Here is the aquaponic fountain that we are in right now. Cool. I recognize the condo building in the residential area where I live. And there's a commercial zone down by the Guadalupe River where my husband likes to shop. And there's one of the theme park rides. Oh, and I recognize the industrial building where I work. Did you make this model? Yes. I'm Dylan Samra, chief engineer of Aquatopolis. In order to promote a green environment, I made this model out of recycled materials. This building is made out of an old trophy, and this broken wine opener was conveniently the exact same shape as one of the buildings. So, how do the aquaponic fountains work? Well, water is pumped from the Guadalupe River into the fish tanks, where the fish excrete nutrients into the water. This nutrient-rich water is filtered to remove the solid fish waste and then used to grow plants hydroponically. The water is sent back to the Guadalupe River, completing the cycle. But what happens if the river dries up? The aquaponic fountain pump system is connected to an aquifer that can act as a backup water supply should the Guadalupe River dry up. And what type of fish and plants do the aquaponic fountains produce? The aquaponic fountains produce two main items, romaine lettuce and... Me! Ah, oh my gosh, what is that? I am the world's largest and smartest bluegill. But how can he talk? No one knows how he can talk, but once he starts, it's hard to get him to stop. Bluegills like myself are grown in these fountains. Every day, over 4,000 bluegills are produced from each 600,000 liter tank. So this means that one aquaponic fountain daily can produce up to 24,000 fresh fish in addition to over 100,000 pounds of lettuce. The tanks are made of cartoons. You mean the tanks are made of carbon nanotubes and the umbrella, which is used to keep rain and other things in the air from getting into the fish tanks, are covered with transparent photovoltaic cells that provide energy for the fountains, making the system very green and self-sustaining. Oh, carbon nanotubes. Well, I'm just a fish. Although he's quite the nutritious fish, I must say. That is right, because the average bluegill has 21 grams of protein and only one gram of fat. Of course, I'm a little bit larger than that. And the romaine lettuce is full of vitamins K and A, fibers, and other minerals. These foods are very healthy while still being appealing to the citizen's appetite. So, how'd you come up with this idea for urban agriculture. Years ago, as the city expanded, we had a problem finding enough room to grow all of the food needed by the citizens using large fields of crops and cattle. We used the engineering process to brainstorm ideas. We started with traditional aquaponics and then became more efficient by going vertical and placing the plant beds directly on top of the fish tanks. After testing the system, we realized that it produced too many fish and not enough lettuce. Finally, we redesigned to reach a solution where the fish tanks were located above the plant beds, requiring fewer pumps and allowing for a flexible ratio of fish to plants. This innovative solution became known as the aquaponic fountain. So, you can grow crops year-round? You can, because during the winter, the umbrella deploys a transparent material over the fountain, creating a tent-like structure that produces a greenhouse effect, keeping the temperature warm. And what happens if one of the fish gets sick? Well, that's one of the risks, but the aquaponic fountains are partitioned, with each tank only watering one bed of lettuce. So if the marine biologist's microorganism sensors were to detect an infection in one of the tanks, then only one-sixth of the fountain would actually be affected. To minimize additional risks, we employ a decentralized system of over 60 aquaponic fountains across the city. This way, if something happens to one of the aquaponic fountains, like a natural disaster, it wouldn't have a major effect on the overall food supply. This is a well thought out system. You must have some smart engineers. We do. Electrical and mechanical engineers design the power and mechanical systems. 
but the key role were the civil engineers who developed the overall aquaponic structure. And don't forget the robotics engineers who designed the system that harvests and processes the bluegill and lettuce, and the drone delivery system that takes the food from the aquaponic fountain and delivers it straight to your home. These aquaponic fountains must cost a fortune. They cost a lot more than your average goldfish bowl, but if you consider how little space the fountains take up, and yet they can feed the entire city's population, then the trade-off is worth it. Additional benefits of the aquaponic fountains is that they produce no carbon emissions at all, and they produce organic food that keeps the population healthy. I do love bluegill, but there's a large variety of food in Aquatopolis. Where does the other food come from? Well, the aquaponic fountains are designed to produce almost two times the amount of food needed by the citizens. The surplus is traded with other cities for different types of food that you enjoy. I love living in Aquatopolis. I moved here because of the amazing education and learning tools offered by the city, as well as the engineering university. I also feel comfortable knowing that the police's surveillance networks are preventing crime and the high-tech fire and medical systems are keeping the city safe. And plus, the air is always pollution-free in Aquatopolis. That's probably because all of the cars are electric, and the electricity is powered by solar cells on all of the buildings. This is a very green city. When I moved here, I got to trade my old car in for a new electric one, no extra cost. I also love that there's so many parks for me to visit with my friends. And I love making new friends every day, since my old friends keep disappearing for some reason. I guess I don't have to take the tour anymore. I am getting hungry, though. Is there anything around here to eat? Uh, whoa, look at the time. I gotta swim. city have as an enticement to offer potential business investors? Well, our city is very entrepreneurial and it brings a lot of people because of that. We have small little shops for people with smaller businesses to start out. And as well as for small businesses, we encourage large corporations to move to our city as well because of how fast we are growing and how good our food production system is. That's great. Um, how will you account for population growth in your food sources? Uh, well, we have the zoning based around the aquaponic fountain, so when we want to expand, since the aquaponic fountains produce more food than is needed to feed the citizens, we would be able to start constructing the next area of the city, and the food will be provided from the surplus of the aquaponic fountains that are already constructed, and so the city would be able to get their food and energy from some of the extra energy provided by the solar cells, and that would be able to provide the city with the food and energy it would need until it could construct its own solar cells and aquaponic fountain. And on top of that, we are located in Central Texas, in the plains of Central Texas, which is based on, bed on bedrock, so we can expand our city very easily because of how flat the land is around. Great. What uh, provisions has your city done to protect against severe drought? Uh, we have backup water supplies. So we have the Guadalupe River is the water source for the aquaponic fountains, and we have an aquifer, the Edwards Aquifer, is the water source for drinking water for the people. So if one of those were to dry up, it could use the other one as a backup. And then if that were to, both of those were to dry up, that would be we were in the severe drought. And so we would have a already existing pump system that would connect to the coast at a desalinization plant, and that would provide water for the city. And desalinization has become a more popular method of drinkable water since 20, 2014, and it's been growing since. Well, I gotta say, you're the best talking fish I've met in years. <laughs> um, my question is, why did you choose this location? Because cities have to come into fruition for some reason, right? Why, why did you choose here? Well, Central Texas is very sunny, so we can have all of our solar cells operating at full capacity, generating the most electricity they can. And it was based on the Guadalupe River, which is very helpful with um, our aquaponic fountains. And um, also, in Central Texas, uh, bluegill are native to Central Texas, and I am a bluegill, so I know that I really like the air quality here. 
And I'm also used to the conditions of the, the air temperature and the way the water works. Uh, how do you see people getting around your city? Well, we have many types of transportation. One of the most popular is electric cars, so that you can have your own, and they are self-driving for people with disabilities, so they can get around just as easy as people without it. Um, we also have bus systems, so that people that can't afford cars or don't have a good transportation these buses, those are also electric. And we have walking trails, bike trails, and we have some taxi services if you want to talk about that. Um, the taxi services work with your phone. So there are taxi services and taxi stations around the streets. And when you go into a taxi, your phone automatically connects with it. And you can tell it where you want to go. It'll drive you there. And then it'll complete the payment for you. And then we also have to deliver the food around the city. We have a drone delivery system. And so if you want food, you just order it off of the internet on your phone. A drone can come over, take the food from the aquaponic fountain. And it has thermoelectric cooling to keep it fresh. And it'll take the food straight to your home within 15 minutes. And one additional thing is that we zone around our aquaponic fountains, eliminating the need for large, large modes of transportation across the entire city because all of the necessary zones are around one four square kilometer area. So your location um, has often has tornadoes and heavy storms. How have you taken that into design in, in the city? How that in consideration? Uh, well, we have a decentralized system of aquaponic fountains, so we're able to provide food for the city in a case of a tornado or anything like that. Uh, we also have carbon nanotube structure supports that will provide strength for the buildings so that they are able to stay safe against tornadoes and other disasters. And our city is far enough inland for hurricanes to not be able to affect it greatly. And so the only large natural disaster could be a tornado, which is usually very local. And so it would only destroy one or two of the aquaponic fountains or the electronic system. But we're on a grid, so if one part were to run out or um, break down, then the other ones could still support it. That sounds good. Is that it? Is that our bell? Well done.